This is the third video for section 1.7 on color and graphs. In this video, we'll be talking about upper and lower bounds for the number of colors that we need for our coloring problem. So just to review, we've been talking about the problem of coloring a graph so that if two vertices are connected by an edge, those vertices are given different colors. And as we've seen, this problem has a lot more applications than just actually filling in the regions on a map. But in general, it's actually hard to tell from just looking at a graph how many colors we're going to need. So we call that number the chromatic number. The chromatic number for a graph is the smallest number of colors needed to properly color the vertices of that graph. And finding the exact chromatic number can be very difficult. We've talked about a greedy coloring algorithm, which allows us to find a what we think is a pretty good coloring for our graph, but there's no guarantee that that's going to be the best answer. So what we're gonna do in this video is talk about finding bounds for the chromatic number. We're gonna find two numbers, and we're gonna know that the chromatic number has to be in between those two numbers. So for the first bound, let's think about what's happening when we're doing a coloring problem when we get to the point where we need a new color. Well, what's happening there is that the, the vertex that we're trying to color, that's this vertex in the middle here in my picture. So the vertex we're trying to color is adjacent to all of the colors that we've already used. So in this case, we've already used five colors, one through five. And if the next vertex on our list to try to color, it, it can't be color one because it's adjacent to color number one, can't be two, and so on. So if you go back through the coloring examples we've done, we sometimes will say like, oh no, it's, it, we've already, we're already connected to all the colors we're already, we've already used, so that's when we need a new color. So in the worst case scenario, this bad thing that requires us to use a new color, that might happen at the point where we're at the vertex that has the highest degree in our entire graph. So the worst case in our coloring problem is that the number of colors we would need would be one more than the highest degree in that graph. So if this vertex in my picture here, which has degree five, if that's the highest degree in the entire graph, and we get to the point where we have to color that vertex, we would need a sixth color. So the, the color of this vertex would have to be color number six, and it had degree five, so that's where we're getting the one more then. So symbolically, I can write this as an inequality. So this symbol here means less than or equal to. So the chromatic number, remember that just means the number of colors we need for our graph. The chromatic number could be equal to one plus the highest degree in the graph if we get to this worst case scenario. And in general, it could be less than that, but it couldn't ever be bigger, right? It can't be greater than that because the chromatic number equaling one plus the highest degree, that's the worst case scenario. So it could be equal to if we get that worst case scenario, but in general, it'll be less than. Something else we can think about to try to get a handle on how many colors we need is to think about clicks. A click in a graph is a collection of vertices that are all mutually adjacent to each other. So here in this first picture, we have three vertices that are all directly connected by edges. In the second picture, we've got five vertices that are all mutually connected by edges. So every possible pair of these vertices are connected by an edge. And in this last picture, we've got a click of four vertices. So we can think of that as being a complete graph. Remember, that was the kind of graph we thought about when we talked about Hamiltonian circuits. So a click is a complete graph inside of our larger graph. So if we do have a click in a graph, what we notice is that all of the vertices in that click all have to be different colors because they're all connected to each other. No two of those vertices could ever be the same color because then we would violate our coloring rule. So the chromatic number has to be at least the size of the biggest click in the graph. So if we have somewhere living in our graph, five vertices that look like that, we're going to need at least five colors. And so again, we've got our less than or equal to. This says that the chromatic number could be equal to that largest click. So, so that's requiring us to have at least five colors, but maybe we only need five colors and then that's our chromatic number. Or maybe something else happens other, in other places in the graph and we end up needing more colors. So the chromatic number would be greater than or equal to the size of that largest click. Now finding clicks in a graph can be a little bit tricky. So here I've got a graph, and if we wanna to try to find clicks, what we're looking for are a sum number of vertices that are all mutually connected by edges. So three vertex clicks are pretty easy to find because that's just a triangle. So for example, vertex A, let me use a different color there, vertex A, vertex D, and vertex F, those form a click because those are three vertices that are all connected by edges. So any triangle, and there's a whole bunch of these three vertex clicks in the graph, any uh, set of vertices like that 
would be a click of three vertices. But what about more vertices? It turns out that there is actually a set of four vertices in this graph that are all mutually connected by edges. If you want, pause the video and see if you can find it. We're looking for four vertices that are all connected to each other by edges. Did you find it? Well, it turns out it's vertex D, vertex E, vertex G, and vertex C. If we look, all of those vertices are all connected to each other by edges. D is connected to G, G is connected to E, G is connected to C, and E is connected to C. If you didn't find it, don't worry about it because it's pretty tricky to, to find, but again, keep your eye out for those kind of clicks because that's going to be giving us a handle on our chromatic number. Okay, so if we had this graph, what would our bounds say about the chromatic number? So the largest click in the graph is four, right? So that click of four vertices D, E, G, and C, that is the largest click. There are not five vertices in this graph that are all mutually connected to each other. What about the other end of our spectrum? What's the highest degree in the graph? Let's see if we can spot it. So D here has degree five. And if we look at all of our other vertices, that's gonna be the highest vertex. C also has degree five, but again, a tie just means that is the highest degree in the graph. So one plus five, that's six. So this means that my chromatic number is somewhere in between four and six. If I were going to properly color, color this graph using the fewest possible number of colors, I'm gonna need at least four colors and at most six colors. But what we don't know, what this doesn't tell us is whether or not we need exactly four colors or do we need exactly five colors or do we need exactly six colors? So it gives us some amount of control over what the chromatic number needs to be, but it doesn't tell us exactly what that answer is. So in summary, when we're looking at degrees and clicks, that can give us an idea of what that chromatic number could be. And the question of finding the exact chromatic number and then finding a coloring that uses that number of colors, that's a whole other problem, right? Even if we somehow figured out what the chromatic number is, then we actually have to find a way to color the graph using that number of colors. So again, these are pretty difficult problems. And a lot of actual mathematical research uh, is happening today uh, looking at graph coloring problems. So this is a really open uh, field of study for mathematicians. But hopefully you've gotten a good overview of the coloring problem for graphs.